be no flower throwing in this one. D.C., the best team in the league by a wide margin, takes on a San Antonio squad, which needs a win to make it into the postseason. Cooking's been fantastic. We are full. We did all of the dancing we could handle, and we're just lucky that Greg McElroy caught the Uber to the building. Here's what's at stake. D.C. will be home next week in the first round of the playoffs. San Antonio can only get a playoff further with a win today and an Arlington loss tomorrow. It is all on the line for the Brahmas today. With that, we welcome you. Tom Hart alongside Greg McElroy. We've got Cole Kublik and Katie George down on the field. The D.C. season has been sensational, except they're not the same team lately that they were early in the season. The offense has kind of hit some bumps in the road lately. They haven't been able to run the ball with the same efficiency. Abe Smith, the best running back in the XFL, still leads the league in rushing by a fairly wide margin, but the consistency hasn't been there. And then conversely, defensively, they've struggled as well, going up against a Brahmas team and a gotta-have-it back-against-the-wall situation that finally found some offensive production last week. Brahmas feel good coming into this one. Let's gets you down to the field to the only man on the broadcast today who still has his blue check mark. His name is Cole Kubelik. Well, we have two starting caliber quarterbacks that are going to play for the D.C. defenders tonight. Jordan Tayamo, you get the majority of the reps. You start the games out. Most quarterbacks don't want to give up any snaps. Yeah. How have you two been able to make this work this season? You know, we're both, you know, talented players. He's athletic and, uh, you know, he knows how to win the game and whenever his number is called, he, he goes out there and beats a leader as of myself. So, uh, whatever way to win and go out there and lead the team, that's what we're gonna, both going to do. Jared King, you've been a starting quarterback for a long time. When Jordan starts the game out, you're waiting for your turn. What's going through your mind when you're not getting the opportunity right out of the gate? Yeah, just got to stay ready. And when I do get in, do my job. You know, it's all about winning here, and it's what I love about this team. We all just want to win, so I just want to do my job, help the team win. Thank you. Thank you. Katie? Thanks, Cole. Hines, to keep your playoff chances alive, today is a must win. What's been your message this week to your group? Uh, this is a big game, not just for us as a team, but uh, also a big game for us individually as players. A lot of scouts will be looking at this game. If you want to start playing your best ball towards the end of the year, we get a great opportunity to face the best team in our league. So uh, a lot at stake today and uh, looking forward to it. Now you and D.C.'s defensive coordinator Greg Williams were on staff together at the Jets, so you know him well. What are you expecting from him today? Uh, I love Greg, man. I know his defense is going to come out. They're going to play tough. They're going to play physical. Hell, you know, Greg loves some Greg, so it's all about <laughs> Greg. But uh, we got it's going to be a tough challenge. We're up for the challenge. Best of luck. Right, appreciate it. Three G's in the first name and a dominating defense. Let's get you some XFL pregame access. It's all in the family for Heinz Ward. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah, I got to get to work. I'm mic'd up now. We got one more shot to get me in the playoff. Yeah, well, got to take care of business today. Yes, sir. I need your best today. Yes, sir. Give me everything you got today, all right? Yes, sir. Let's go. Clap it up. Clap it up. Clap it up. You ready? You with me? You with me? Yeah. Ah! that we will set the temperature for what we want this game to be, right? We will do that. And do it early. And do it early. And have fun, man. Play for each other, man. Let's go out here and get us a victory. Well, D.C. was running hot early, only allowed 19 points a game over the first six, but Reggie Barlow's squad allowing 32 points a game over the last three. That dominating defense, I like Greg talked about with the running game, has taken a step back. We are ready to go. John Parker Romo will get us started. Puka Williams Jr., standout from the University of Kansas, set to return. If you haven't watched the XFL yet this season, Kickoffs look a little bit different because they are. Ball spotted at the 30-yard line. The coverage team, the returning team, lined up at the forward 35 and 30, just five yards apart. And Romo's kick is taken by Williams at the six. Coca Williams, an explosive athlete, bursts through before Romo forces him out of bounds. Now, Cole mentioned the two quarterback system for D.C., Jordan Ta'amu and De'Ara King. Ta'amu was a fantastic quarterback at Ole Miss, and he's got a lengthy pro resume. Transferred to Ole Miss from New Mexico Military Institute. He won the starting job. Ended up in the first iteration of the XFL. St. Louis' is starting quarterback. He's been on the practice squad with five different NFL teams. And he comes into this game 
I was about to say, something looked wrong right here. 12 touchdowns against just two picks. And we got a clock issue to get settled. Uh, take it back, it's the chain. A little chain issue, no problem, but Tamu, excellent player. What I love most about him is when he was coming out of the New Mexico Institute, he signed at Ole Miss the same year as Shea Patterson, who was a five-star. It was an afterthought and worked his way into the starting role and ultimately became a difference maker for the... Smith with the carry on first down. Fred Kais is the Otto offensive Black coordinator. Waco. Otto Black Waco, they're going fast. Here comes the tempo. Kais already had his play call in. Jordan Tama with the keeper, and he takes it to the 40. QB run game, big part of what D.C. wants to do. That's really their bread and butter. They're going to run an offense that looks very similar to that of a college style. A lot of quarterback run, will play multiple guys, a lot of zone reads, a lot of run pass options where the quarterback has the option to hand it off, pull it, run it himself, or throw it to an open wide receiver. It's a team that also likes to utilize tempo and mix things up for the opposing defense. Gucci shuffled the play call here, and they go with an inside pitch to Ethan Wolf, former Tennessee volunteer where he played with his brother Eli, and he picks up the first down. And at their core, D.C. is a team that really wants to pound the football. As you can see, this year, Abram Smith, as we mentioned, guy that currently leads the league, he's the running back. He'll get a majority of the carries, but both De'Eric King and Jordan Tamu very effective with their legs. Tamu wants to throw, flush from the pocket, directing traffic, and he fires on time. Completion to Lucky Jackson, and he's got plenty of space. Jackson inside the 10. And finally taken down inside the five after a 53-yard gain for the former Hilltopper from Western Kentucky. And just an amazing job by Jordan Ta'amu. Feels the pocket breakdown. You see him point, telling Lucky to get open, run outside, get in phase, and then Lucky Jackson does the rest. You see the catch and run. Runs out of gas a little bit after crossing all the way back across the field. Excellent start for the defenders offensively. Slow season start for Lucky, but he's turned it on in the last half. Good play of the opening drive. Tom with a play action. A bullet complete for a touchdown. It's Alex Ellis, and D.C. wastes no time getting on the board. And just great action underneath Luke pass to the right. But look at the defender. That's Luke Barku trying to undercut that throw. If that throws just a little bit inside or if that throws just a little bit late, Barku's going to be able to make a play, probably even intercept the pass. Just pinpoint accuracy on the move there from Ta'amu. They're going to go for two from the five-yard line. Ta'amu. And that is caught. It's a good conversion. It's Josh Hammond and D.C. using most of their offensive weapons here on this opening drive. Just a clinic of a start here. Look at Ta'amu working through his progression, works back inside. Yet again, terrific coverage defensively by Ranthi Texada. Just not enough as the ball is thrown low and away, which allows Hammond to go underneath it, secure the catch for the two-point conversion. Ta'amu's with Cole. How big was movement of the pocket and your ability to scramble and find somebody downfield on that drive? Uh, very huge, you know. Uh, us as quarterbacks, we work these drills every day. The pocket collapse, escape, find open guy, keep eyes downfield, make a play. Thank you. Thank you. He's played in some big games in his time in the SEC with Ole Miss. And Jordan Zahamu. It came out running tempo, and it seemed like that got the Brahmas on their heels early. Big time. I mean, they immediately as soon as they got that first third down conversion they were off to the races just a picture perfect start for dc and heinz ward can't like what he saw already from his defense matt mccrane will kick off fred brown back to receive he's got the lone kickoff return for a score in the league this year brown stood up just past the 25 yard line been an inconsistent San Antonio offense led by Jack Cohn. 
himself has played in some monster games in his career. First in the Big Ten with Wisconsin, Rose Bowl in 2019, and the Big Ten championship game that same season. Transferred to Notre Dame and got off to a hot start with a fighting Irish. A Notre Dame record 366 yards and four touchdowns in his season opener. Wearing a gold helmet. One yard for Jaquez Patrick. Brought down by DJ Swearinger. The story of the year for San Antonio has been injuries. I mean, they've been totally beat up across the front, having to mix and match a bunch of different offensive line combinations. They've started multiple quarterbacks and lost a couple for the year. Tone was the guy at the beginning, though, and he'll finish the season as the starter. Without their starting left guard, Maya Tahoma in this game. He's out with an ankle injury. Blitz, and he got rid of it to Patrick. Patrick is going to set up a third and short. And Greg Williams, the D.C. for D.C., known for blitz coverage. He wants to come after the quarterback. Dash Bear single press. That's the defensive call, but most of what he's going to do is trying to apply pressure. He wants to blitz. He wants to heat up the quarterback. Looks like man coverage here defensively. On third and two. Straight ahead, and the ball spotted good enough for a first down. Good surge there along the front by Jacquez Patrick. Didn't look like there was a whole lot there, but just enough for the conversion. As you see, San Antonio is going to be a team that wants to play a little bit slower, take the air out of the football, going against a red-hot D.C. offense, expecting to slow the game down and shrink it as best they can. Quick shot to his tight end, Alizé Mack, for a pickup of five. You can tell all week long, this one, a little fake to the inside, run pass option. They have a guy wide open there, inside on the stick. He has to get the ball out really quickly because there's going to be some unblocked defenders in his face all game long. Here's Landon Akers, trying to set up a screen for him, and he manages only to get back to the line of scrimmage. Great tackle by Francis Bernard there, the former Utah Ute, very instinctive player. Has a great feel for the position alongside Reggie Northrup, who's training to become an MMA fighter. Just one fight away, one win away from potentially getting in the UFC. They make up one of the best linebacker tandems in the entire XFL. The slam drag, slam drag, you have a drag. Vegas, we go. Voice of quarterback Jack Cohn. On third and three. Looking to go deep, but that was covered. Brings it needle to get it to Akers, who gets his foot down for a nine-yard gain and a first down. Nothing there initially. Much like Tom who did on the opening drive, having to scramble to his right. It's a great job by Akers coming back to the quarterback. Getting friendly on the sideline and allowing Jack Cohn to deliver a nice, accurate pass. We out, Vegas. Let's be a spot going. right here. Maybe Lady, lock him up that? and see if he can't throw a shot downfield. Patrick finds a hole. Jack Bears Patrick with a first down run for the Brahmas. Scores forward on a gain of 11. And this is really cool look where you have three different blockers moving from left to right across the formation. This ball is designed to cut back. A little counter action from the Brahmas, and there was nobody home defensively for the defenders. Here we go. Hey, it takes one. It takes one. Vegas, Vegas. We go. You hear him say it takes one. That means it takes one. That's the hot route. He's got to get the ball quick. There's the blitz. Able to fit it in to Travis Johnson, second and short. 22 personnel. So when you, 22 personnel. Let's go Fizz, zero far fact. Fizz, zero far fact. Good stagging. Hey, good Hurry stallion. Up. Good stallion. Good, good stallion. stallion. This will be a handoff fact. to the right. Good stallion. Low motion, John. Low motion. Hurry up with the shift. Hurry up, shift, Hurry shift, up shift. with the shift. We're good. Take it, take it. We go. Why? 
on second and two. Patrick. Maybe a foot. That'll bring up third and short. Joe Wallace and Santos Ramirez both in on the stop. And Patrick's going to leave the field on third and short. Tenth play of the drive. John Hilleman is the new running back for San Antonio. Here we go. Vegas, we go. Hilleman's first touch. Needs a yard. And he squirts over the line to pick it up. Great second effort from Hilleman there. Didn't look like anything was there initially. Continued to drive. It was pretty well defended. How about this look? It just won't be denied. Look, stopped in the backfield. Knows he has to cross the 25-yard line to convert the first down. He does just that as he keeps the drive forward. We go! Watch opening drive for the Brahmas. DC scored on its opening possession. And they get it to Hilleman out of the backfield. Spins his way forward and he picks up eight. Jimmy Johnson took over play calling Nicole, duties Nicole. a few games into the season. Yeah, Let's go trips left, half Casper. Bad frog. Trips left, half Casper. Bad frog. You're good. That's usually something to the right. Bad would be something to the left. So this would be a handoff to the left with a motion. Patrick back in the game at running back. He's able to muscle his way for a first down. Game right with the tackle. One game has looked good, and Jack Cohn is perfect so far. Six for six on this drive. Hey, 77. 77, 77. Who's the mic? Linda, Linda. So you see here when he says, who's Vegas, the mic? He's talking go. to the center. He's wondering Why who's the middle you? linebacker. That's what sets the protection. <laughs> Wide open, but they're looking for a screen and nothing doing. Alize Mack was out there to block. First miss for either quarterback to start this game. Jordan Tahamu, three for three. Cone now six for seven. Four wise, four wise. Seven-minute drive go, go. still rolling for San Antonio. So you're big, good eight, hand off to the right, or you could throw a bubble to the left. You're gum, think bubble. And it's Landon Akers who picks up five. So that right there is an RPO. It's it's called a run play, where hey. so you have the option as a quarterback to hey, run the ball. You zero. can also hear alert zero. He's telling alert the guys, hey, be prepared for oh, pressure. Wow. That's a pressure coverage. And you hear gum. That means you chew gum and you blow a bubble. So run a bubble. 76, 76. That's the oh, RPO Vegas. call. So here, listen to the communication between the quarterback, the offensive line, and the wide receivers, knowing that this is a blitz down Vegas. for DC's defense. We go. From the edge, Cohen gets rid of it and just topped the hand of Landon Akers. What's going through a quarterback's mind when pressure is crashing around you? <laughs> React more than anything else. You got, just got to know that your communication is sound across the board. There was nothing to panic about right there. Jack Cohn felt like there was going to be an additional unblocked defender that was going to blitz. He didn't come. So he had more time than he thought, but he retreated anyways, got himself into unnecessary trouble. As a result, has to throw off his back foot and misses just high on what would have been a walk-in touchdown. From 26, John Parker Romo drills it through. He leads the league now with 16 field goals on the season. San Antonio in a must-win situation. Heinz Ward's team is on the board, but trailing in the first quarter. The streets of San Antonio it is graduated an incredible party with the second largest parade in the country and some DC fans or at least one is about to say I saw a little house divided right there. Uh -huh. To sit next to each other in such a bitter rivalry is amazing. There's Puka Williams. Puka Williams. Puka Williams Jr. gets tripped up from behind. 
in a league that has only seen one kickoff return for a score this season. Puka Williams nearly had the second. Van Puka can fly, too. That was really impressive right there. By number 20, Kima Sivran. He was full go, great angle, but my goodness, look at Puka Williams off to the races. Look at 20, shot out of the cannon. Somehow drags him down, man. That was impressive effort, but another huge play from D.C. Defenders, the best team in the league. They'll be home in the playoffs next week at Audi Field. Tomo hands it off to Abram Smith, who picks up just one. Kind of gotten away from the run game for one reason or another. Smith only had 27 yards on just 10 carries last week. His least productive game, especially by touches for the former Baylor Bear. It's a fascinating story is Abe Smith. Terrific teammate, the guy that played running back coming out of high school, switched to linebacker, back to running back. Just a, a great story. And now second and goal. The league's leading rusher takes it straight ahead. And the opportunity that he got going into his final year at Baylor was just kind of almost on a lark. It was almost out of just necessity in spring football. Jeff Grimes, the offensive coordinator for Baylor, said, man, we don't have a running back that runs my style of ball. I need a bruiser. So the coaches said, well, why don't you try Abe Smith? They put him back there. No one could tackle him in the spring, and the rest is history. So the Baylor single season record for 100-yard rushing games to the end zone and incomplete. Trying to find Chris Blair. Best deep threat in the XFL this season. Too hot from Tamu. Just a little bit high. You want to throw these balls in the back of the end zone. The goal and the landmark is actually the bottom of the goalpost. That's where you want to throw it. But you don't want to throw it at 100 miles an hour. You want to throw it up kind of like an alley-oop so the receiver can go up, time his jump, and make the play high in the back of the end zone. That one just a little bit too hard from Tamu, and it falls incomplete. 21-yard attempt for Matt McCrane out of Kansas State. And he makes his 11th of the season. D.C. with an eight-point lead. 2.31 to go in the first quarter. From the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. All business inside, all party outside. Big dog, little hat. <laughs> down the field a few times special teams showing up big as well yeah we want to get off to a fast start and the guys took into that and uh, they're playing hard playing fast that was outstanding by puka there on the kickoff return we're like a young reggie barlow or something i don't know <laughs> thank you coach all right that was a 79 yard return for puka williams jr but jordan taamu in the offense couldn't poke it in. They settled for a field goal. Here's Travis Johnson on the return. Trying to go hurdle. What a great idea. Meanwhile, Delante Scott talked with Katie George. Delante, you're starting on the back foot after a return like that. How big was that stop on defense? Oh, uh, man, it was, it was big for us to get that, man. Especially in, uh, you know, they uh, get a long kick return like that, something we can't allow to happen. Uh, so, you know, for us to come out there, back against the wall and, you know, stand up, that's, that's what we came here to do. We came here to play defense and keep, keep the, at least amount of points as we can on this scoreboard. You know what I mean? So, that's, just, that's what we're here to do. Thank you. Mm -hmm, thank you. Ball is tipped. Meanwhile, Puka Jr. had that long return, but he got stopped, Cole. Puka, I was going to ask you how you got caught, but I just caught you right there. So how'd that happen? Uh, man, honestly, I just can't get the rhythm uh, with the knee brace. Just can't get the rhythm, but next one, I'm punching it in. What's the best time we've ever put up? 40, 100, anything? The, the, uh, in the 40, 435, 434, uh, pro day, 435. So, yeah. That's enough. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I said it, man. I've, I've called Puka's games dating back to when he was at Kansas. I've never seen him get caught. So that knee brace got to be heavy. Get Cole. Swings it out to Jacquez Patrick. Francis Bernard with another stop for D.C. Tied with Northrop for tackles in the season. Bernard coming off of a 10-tackle performance last week against Arlington. This is a D.C. team that's favored by three and a half in this game. 
eight and one on the season. Only one blemish on their record. Let's go, Vegas, right. let's go. Let's go. The favorites to win the entire thing. Ah, uh, you got the flare, flare. We out, Vegas. We out, play. We go. Whitey, my son. That was Acres in motion. They go to him. And an Acres turns up field and takes it to the 48-yard line. They're doing a good job of creating some confusion against the man coverage that DC likes to live in. Right there, they get into a bunch. They create the bunch by motioning down, and they get Acres on the angle route that's so difficult to cover. It was timed up beautifully, and it was a nice conversion for the Brahmas. Omaha, Omaha, we go! Late the first quarter, second possession for San Antonio. Patrick stopped for a loss of one. XFL continues tomorrow on ESPN starting at 3 o'clock. Houston against Arlington. The Renegades trying to play their way into the postseason. And we finish with Vegas against Seattle. Every game this weekend, final week of the regular season, has playoff implications. That includes St. Louis, which started the week putting 53 on Orlando. A.J. McCarron threw for six touchdowns. Battlehawks won 53-28 in the Dome. And some complicated tie-breaking situations with Seattle. But that's St. Louis's path to the North Division playoff next week in D.C. So that'll bring it into the first quarter. And what an entertaining run at that. D.C. has scored on both possessions. Thanks to a long kickoff return from Puka Williams. And San Antonio tried to answer again. Back to the Alamo Dome in a moment. Quarterbacks, they each were born to take this stage. Only question is, which team believes enough to take them? The NFL Draft begins April 27th on ESPN and ABC. NFL Draft live from Kansas City. And what a class of quarterbacks. All those teams will have a choice of. Who's your number one, Greg McElroy? I like Bryce Young, personally. I, I think they're all unique and special in their own specific way. But just across the board, I think the best player is Bryce Young. He's the most consistent. I think he's done more under the circumstances with maybe not having a superior offensive line in front of him the last couple years and did so against top-tier competition. I, I think Bryce Young's a really good player. Jack Cohn facing the pressure. And he finds Patrick with a beautiful catch. He's a flag down in the backfield. And Patrick rumbles all the way up inside the 25. And 33-yard catch and run for the former Florida State Seminole. He's probably coming back, too. 16, 16. Offense number 62. 10 yard penalty. Third down. And it was a save a life hold. You're going to see as the defender rushes upfield immediately, Dwayne Wallace is beat. But you see him grab with that left arm. If he doesn't. If he doesn't make that hold, there's no way the ball gets out. Jack Cohn might get sacked, fumbled, what have you. So, obviously, when you're beat off the ball that badly, it's about the only option you have, and it was a good call by the officials. 74 Auburn is the play call. If we had time, I'd ask Cole about it. Third and 21. Cohn, sandwiched and taken down. And a D.C. party in San Antonio. Andre Mintz from Vanderbilt. Yeah, too bad Gabe Wright not in there. Jacob Panashuk, the other. And you only have a three-man rush. There's three defenders that are rushing the quarterback against a five-man protection. You have five guys to block three, and you get beat inside. Just not good from a leaky offensive line that has had their fair share of struggles this year. Brad Wing absolutely crushes this ball. Got it inside the five. Puka Williams can only take it out to the 15. That was a 63-yard punt. Here's Hines Ward on that last play. How'd I get a sack on three-man rush? Well, that's what DC has done all season, either with pressure or without.
First empty possession for San Antonio. Ready, ready. Here's Joe Tomo with the slide down. Let's take a look at what Jack Cohn, and we're going to flag on the hit what Jack Cohn is looking at on the tablet right now. I think it was with his helmet. Hold up. Slow down. He went over the top. There is no foul for a late hit on the sliding quarterback, second down. And Sean Williams, who was in on it, picked the flag up. And I think the initial thought was that the contact was made with the helmet. They threw the flag. Dean and company cleaned it up. He went over the top, and there was no illegal contact. That was a good job by the officials. On second down at three. A bullet from Tamu. That's good for a first down. Finds Alex Ellis. Meanwhile, Jack Cohn learning on the sideline. That's a live look at the tablet that he's watching. He's watching the D.C. pressure. And it's so cool to know, and obviously he's not looking at the offensive line. I can probably see that. There's nothing you can do about that, but he is looking at the coverage, and he's taking note. See top right, third and 21. Hey, next time we're in third and long, this is what they ran. So it's good to kind of compartmentalize those situational down distant play calls. Chris Blair with one to run. The league's most dangerous deep threat takes it himself, and he gets taken down at the two-yard line. plus yard receptions and just excellent timing on the glance route makes a guy miss and he's off to the races you could see the speed on display from Chris Blair just can't quite get away as he stopped at the two yard line either way this DC offense continues to keep the pedal pressed 70 yard reception he did most of the work himself 58 yards after the catch Tenny Adewuse is injured here's Cole Kublik when did you know you had him on that route uh, the middle of the field was open so I just once I broke in I seen the safety was back I knew joint was coming to me how did you get caught I got to get in the box. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it. Play for Fred McNair at Alcorn State. Was undrafted coming out of college. Ended up spending some time with the Packers. And that is NFL speed he just flashed. The tight ends in the game for D.C. Abram Smith, the running back. Tomo out of the pistol. Smith surges and a gain of run. Rico Jeffers on the stop for San Antonio. league they'll decide on the point after just a great job there executing the mesh concept where you have two shallow crossing routes you try to see if a defender gets picked the defender's slow to cover Alex Ellis who's crossing with speed and he's wide open for another defender touchdown they're gonna go for two from the five-yard line right, ready. pressure coming up the middle and another conversion for D.C. This time it goes to Brandon Smith. And the best team in the league flexing its muscles, wanting to go into the postseason, hitting on all cylinders. And the San Antonio fans know that it is a steep hill to climb here. Jordan Ta'amu is zoned for two touchdowns here in the first half. D.C. leads by 16. 
second quarter. And D.C. leads 19-3. It's a must-win game for San Antonio and their postseason hopes. The live line has jumped. D.C. given 15 and a half points. He came in favored by three and a half. It's a lot of points. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, they're playing inspired football on offense so far, and the special teams have given them great field position with a couple big plays. Fred Brown from the two. Not a great return. Meanwhile, on the other side for San Antonio, it's been a game of missed opportunities. Single high. You got him. You got him. Oh, my goodness. Gosh dang it on that dang. Uh, did you see it? Well, it was one high, and I was like, I think Vash is going to be good on this. So I saw Vash, and then the corner fell off. This chance for Jack Cohn and the San Antonio offense. A sidearm was one to the sideline. Long throw to net four yards to Fred Brown. What he's talking about, when it's one high, that means there's one safety deep in the middle of the field. He's going to stay over the top and cover the post, but he thought there might have been an opportunity on the crossing route, which there was. He just took a little longer than he anticipated, and he didn't have the patience to wait. Here's John Hilleman. Which, by the way, is it's real easy to say, well, have a little more patience. Have a little more, You know the coaches have been telling them all week, hey, man, you got to get the ball out against these guys. They're going to blitz. They're going to pressure. So it's a delicate balance of, of allowing things to uncover and being patient enough for things to develop while still understanding the shot clock in your head that's been drilled into your head all week long. You're still in line with that as well. Playoffs are next week. We'll be in D.C. on Sunday. This defender's team... So waiting to see who their opponent will be in a North Division battle. Hilleman, and what a sensational second effort he's shown every time he's touched the ball. Undrafted free agent of the Giants coming out of Rutgers in 2019. Got a start against the Patriots that year as a rookie. Nothing open play side, but he gets it back on around to the left and makes it fourth and inches to at least give the Brahmas an opportunity to think about it. San Antonio 8 of 14 on fourth down this season. They're going to leave the offense out there. They're going to run it looking for one, and they got it. Something early interesting Hines Ward told us before the game today and reiterated Katie on air. He said it's not just about getting into the playoffs. These guys know there are more scouts watching this game than have watched all season. It's a chance to prove that you belong. Yeah, it's what have you done for me lately type of approach. The first thing the scouts look at when evaluating these guys, debating whether or not to bring them to camp is what was the last time out and how did you look? So hugely important tape for these guys if they want to advance their career. Cohen delivers on time against the pressure. He finds Nick Holly for a game of 16. Really nicely done up front, too, by Rubens Joseph. Accurate pass over the middle. If you look at D.C. defensively, that's where they've been hit a lot. Right there in the middle of the field between the numbers. That's really the attack zone with the style of defense that Greg Williams likes to play. Chuck has Patrick. I want to go back to what we were just talking about a moment ago, Greg, about the scouts watching. The XFL is unique among the spring leagues. It's finishing the regular season done before the draft. These guys will have an opportunity from a calendar standpoint to then get into camp. That's why it's by far the most appealing league to me, and it's because of the calendar. If for whatever reason you get banged up, you can recover and still potentially compete in the fall for an NFL team. So the calendar works out great. You get your regular season done, get an evaluation period, now hopefully get an opportunity to go to camp somewhere. Meanwhile, it's not just the players trying to make it to the next level, it's the officials too. And in fact, just this week, line judge Jay Bilbo received an NFL deal. So he'll be moving on to the next level. One of two XFL officials that picked up an NFL contract this week. 
77, 77, 77. Well, congratulations to those two. Third and five. Vegas. We go. Whitey, my son. And they're going to bring the house, and they get to call in a hurry. There's no question that Anthony Hines was coming. Greg Williams not happy. There's continued action after the whistle. Not intentional grounding and fourth down and another punting opportunity for Brad Wing. And this is called hey diddle diddle three up the middle. All right. Why? Because there's three defenders that are coming right between the guards. So it's an impot. You can't block it. You just know as a quarterback, it's one of the four or five different protections where you're dead. Ball's got to get out immediately. And they did a good job of covering the outlet for Cone. I'm so glad you didn't turn that into an Andrew Dice Clay skit. 40 yard <laughs> punt. Brad Wing, Andrew Hines with the pressure. DC in control of this one. A beautiful afternoon on the Riverwalk in San Antonio. This has been the class of the league all season long. They haven't lost a single game in their division. They'll host the North Division Championship next week. That's rushing team in both yards per game and touchdowns on the season. They play two different quarterbacks in Tamu and King. They win close games, five and one and one score games this season, which in the XFL is any game decided by eight points or less. Derek King now in a quarterback. And he hands it off on first down to Abram Smith, who's the league's leading rusher. There's so many things that DC does well, and quite frankly, it's a very simple attack. It's so simple for the offense. But it forces the defense to cover so much. As you can see, De'Ara King is another example of, hey, it's simple. Just switch out the quarterback, and the offense almost completely changes. De'Ara King, of course, a decorated college player of both Houston and Miami with great mobility. And he slings it on the run to Hot Sauce Hammond, who takes it out to the 30. Hammond, four years as a Florida Gator. And this is really not that different than triple option. You read the dive player, and then your quarterback's keeping it, and your pitch man just happens to be in front of you, so it becomes a completion. And if it falls incomplete, it falls incomplete. King, complete. That's Brandon Smith, the offensive coordinator. Is Fred Kais. Spread right, spread right, wide, spread right, wide. Lady, lady, lady. Spread right, wide, lady. Spread right, wide, lady, lady. Lady, 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 lady. Wait, wait. There's Smith. complete to the 50-yard line. It's Ethan Wolf. Fifth right, Linda. Fifth right, Linda, Linda, Linda. And they've got the Brahmas on their heels here. Second and three. No huddle again. Wait, wait. Pressure picked up. Smith trying to sneak out of there. He does. It lowers his shoulder for the first down. Incredible run by Abram Smith. You can see, I mean, having played linebacker, he is certainly not afraid of contact. Watch how he dips the shoulder, finishes the run, boom. Continues to surge a little bit forward. Instead of going out of bounds right there, it had been easy to do that. Instead, he spins out of it and finds a way to gain a couple more yards. Big 12 champs at Baylor, went to the Sugar Bowl. Wait, wait. A little bit high that time from King, and there's a flag on the play. King, offense number 78. 
To Marcus Hayes, the right tackle. Left tackle. Offense number 78. Ten yard penalty. First down. Pardon me, the left tackle. Right you in the middle see, of your screen. You can see right there that right arm. Working against Mike Scott. Of course, the two brothers for the Brahmas, Delonte Scott and Mike Scott, both have taken turns at that edge position, making a lot of wait, plays wait. against opposing offenses. Easy for the equipment guy, just one nameplate. King <laughs> tips and falls harmlessly to the ground, trying to work it into Chris Blair. Chris Blair. Cameron Kelly still on the turf. Wait, Weeks ago against Houston. All just a little bit high here for De'Ara King. Of course, gets hit as he's delivering the football. Kelly kind of awkward as the contact happens here at the bottom. You see him kind of get bent backwards a little bit. Looks like he's going to be able to walk off under his own power. Thank goodness for that. Was in the league with the Steelers, played in 14 of their games in 2019, coming out of San Diego State. Well, he was first team All Mountain West Conference. And, you know, we're hope hopefully that carries us into the second half of the rest of the game. Your top five in the league in sacks. Why is that? Effort, man. Just effort. You know, just keep going, keep chopping, and don't stop till the job's done. Thank you. Yep. First to ten for San Antonio. The offense led by Jack Cohen. Here's Jaquez Patrick, who dances his way for a first down. Ramirez to stop. Beasley, not only a guy who can get to the quarterback, but had a monster play last week against Orlando, clinging to a two-point lead in the fourth quarter. 
Beasley got his hands in his pass, decided to take it himself, and sealed the win for the Brahmas with a pick six. Yeah, great play here. Obviously tipping it up and reeling it in, taking it to pay dirt. This Brahmas defense has made a ton of plays like that to keep them in games this year. Seven quarterback pressures in the last two weeks for Beasley, most in the league. Cohn taken down by blitzing Francis Bernard. Joey Porter leading the linebackers over there on the San Antonio sideline. Porter family getting ready for the NFL draft. Joey Porter Jr. expected to go in the first round. We hit the two-minute warning, D.C. Leading by 16, looking to hit the postseason on a run. San Antonio needs a comeback and a win to move on. He's vying for the final spot in the playoffs with Houston. San Antonio could clinch a spot with a win and an Arlington loss. The win would give San Antonio the tiebreaker. And wait to see what Bob Soup's team does tomorrow afternoon. In a must-win game, those are must-have plays. It's a well-thrown ball, man. It's your number one wide receiver with plenty of cushion, plenty of separation. It's one that you just have to have. If you're a quarterback, you got to trust them to make that play again. Got to keep looking in Vasher's direction. Third and ten now. They go to Patrick. And he gets thrown down for a gain of only three. Santos Ramirez. Isaiah Johnston in on the tackle for D.C. Ramirez was a standout at Arkansas. It's a team captain for the Razorbacks in 2017. Tied for fifth in the league with two picks this year. A sack on the last possession led to a punt. Now a drop pass eventually leads to a punt on this possession for San Antonio. Put the Williams from the 15. After that 45 yard punt, the win. Episode 7 of the nine part XFL docuseries Player 54 Chasing the Dream premieres this Wednesday. 3.30 on ESPN2, then immediately available on ESPN Plus. If you missed an episode, you can catch up on the series as all six previous episodes live on ESPN Plus. To get ESPN Plus, go to ESPNPlus.com or download the ESPN app. Jordan Ta'amu, the quarterback. Tamu, a little fake and a run, and he slides in for a pickup of five. Here we go, here we go. Here's Fred Kais. All right, we're going to go to a dead. Look, we're going to go flex. We're going to go flex right queen. Flex right queen. Yes. Flex taking a timeout here, looking at a second of five. Rick Kice is an incredible coaching story. He'd been with Reggie Barlow Flex at right Alabama Queen. State as offensive coordinator Blade. previous to this, but his I first head coaching job was at Southwestern High School, inner city Baltimore. And when he first took the job in 1990, he was one of two white people at the school total. The only other one was the hey, principal. Hey, the players and families weren't happy he got the job. They boycotted him. Only 19 showed up that first season. Second and five now. They've been on a long losing streak. He eventually turned the program around. Here's Josh Hammond. Picks up a first down and a gain of 25. And an injured player. We had an incredible visit with Coach Keis before the game today. Just salt to the earth, football through and through. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal person. He, he's an ordained minister. 
but he also he's also a plumber. he's also a plumber so he, he can do everything he, he he's really an amazing person and, and one thing that's been really remarkable in visiting with him and, and kind of following his story is he gets people to believe you referenced his first job 19 players after a boycott they ended up in the second year going five and four i mean just a remarkable turnaround with only a few guys most of which playing both ways most of which playing almost every single snap of the game and he's been on a wild ride ever since from the high school level to the college level throughout the hbcu's been at many different stops and a guy that continues to relate to players and bring out the best in them here we go every single place he's been double national championships with hampton back to back 2003 and four tamu leaves the pocket again due to pressure beasley got a hand on it and almost forced to fumble mentioning offensive coordinator Fred Kais for DC. I looked up his bio when we had this game and it stopped in 2017. So when we got on the call, I asked him, coach, what, what happened after 2017? Where, where'd you go? He said, well, I was semi-retired coaching at Good Pasture Christian High School in Nashville. He told me he started out as the OC, then went to be the quarterback coach. Said they had about 26 kids on their football team. Mm. Well, he's done it with fewer. Here's a completion of Lucky Jackson. Another huge play for Jackson. This one goes for 29. And his former coach, Reggie Barlow, called him up, convinced him to come to the XFL. Didn't take much convincing either, did it, Tom? Because it was actually Kais's wife who said, you are so unhappy, semi-retired. Please go back to work. You cannot stay away from the game. So it was a really good time call by Coach Barlow. Look, I know there's some coordinators in this league that have a, a stronger pedigree, that have spent more time at the professional level, some of which are calling plays for the first time. There's so many different great stories to learn here in the XFL. Just phenomenal to get to know all these amazing people. And obviously Fred Kais being one of them, but uh, watching his offense and studying his offense the last 10 weeks, I, I'm probably more impressed with him than anybody else. Now, it helps when you have great quarterbacks, helps when you have a great running back and two great wide receivers and an excellent tight end. But the way he mixes tempo and the way he forces you to defend the entire field, I, I think his offense is really, really interesting, rooted in run-and-shoot principles and a lot of difficult things to defend. Tom a chance with 33 seconds left in the half. Every single time, every single time San Antonio has to have a shot in the arm. Their offense all season long has had their fair share of difficulties. Their defense always seems to find a way to at least keep them in the game. Jordan Williams did it against Arlington a few weeks ago where he had the game-changing fumble return to the house. He does it again here in a two-minute situation to give the ball back to his offense with the Brahmas getting a chance to steal some points. Fourth possession of the game for San Antonio. Cone gets taken down. Oh, it looked like a face mask from up here. Gerald Owens, and here's a flag late. We're at the 48, we're at the 48, we're at the 48. Mask on the tackle. So good there. Francis Bernard got into it late, and we got a second flag down. Post play action. So it's you can hear Dean Blandino reviewing the play back in the XFL okay. command okay. center. I've got no face mask on the tackle, but let's see what we got. I got He's clearly grabbing the jersey. Huh? Remember, remember if there's contact, it's UNR. If there's contact, it's UNR. 59 UNR. I've got UNS 96. We're going to offset them at the dead ball spot. And that's his first. In their first. Okay. And it's going to be second okay. down. All right, the down is going to count. Unsportsmanlike and unnecessary roughness coming. Okay. One for each side. After the play, there were fouls by both teams. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Offense number 59. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 96. That's his first. The fouls offset. It's second down. 
Check in with Katie George. Jordan, you said you can't believe that you caught that ball, but it looked like a sure thing. What'd you see? Oh, man, I just knew he was throwing the ball low, so I just dropped out, and it came right to me. Oh, man. <laughs> this defense always seems to give the offense a shot in the arm when it needs it. Why is that? Uh, because, you know, we try to play complimentary football, you know, so when the offense is not up to par where it needs to be, then we'll step up and we'll try to rise as much as we can. 50-50, we'll go to 70-30. I dig the chain. All right, thanks so much. Coming off of an 11-tackle performance last week against Orlando. Now 24 seconds left and a half. Jordan Williams, an incredible story. He was in play game for three years. He took up Art. Conference artist and a great linebacker. And then C.J. Vasher for gain of 14 and a timeout. But 15 seconds left in the half. And San Antonio desperate for a score here. Ramos haven't scored since their opening possession. You want to see some Mark? San Antonio Mark? calls their Jordan second Williams. time. So cool, too. I mean, you can see Arter's formerly known as Prince there. And then even for his head ball coach, giving him the ace of spades with the Brahma logo on it. Very, very talented. He even drew us a picture. Oh, he did? After the Arlington win. Facts, baby. I don't oh, recall what he drew. I don't recall it. His favorite medium is charcoal. There wasn't any charcoal available. No. So he went with the pen and paper, yeah. standard medium. Uh, Artist working big. He either drew the Michelin Man or Cole Kublik. I wasn't sure which one, but they are somewhat indecipherable. We look pretty similar right now. Third and five, 17 seconds left. Pressure from the edge. to stop the clock the Jordan Williams interception and subsequent return sets him up Cone comes up with a huge completion against the Greg Williams pressure and terrific timing you see the zone pressure they're trying to double cover Vasher to the left hand side you see that safety dropping out over the top which allows those slot receivers to freely work over the middle it's exactly what Akers does it's perfectly timed and a very accurate throw from Cohn. And a big shot there that Akers took at the end of the play. Now you have to throw it. I don't think a field goal is going to win this game. So you got three downs here if you operate really, really quickly. Of course, with nine seconds left, that ball's going to come out immediately. You do have a timeout at your disposal, but don't waste any extra time if you don't have to. Patrick is the running back. You got one-on-one -on -one with Vasher to the left-hand side. They give it to Patrick. Took a lot of time. He lost the football at the line. Two seconds left on the clock. DC came out of there with the football. Joe Wallace. Whoa, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Hold it. Stop it. Stay. Stop it. As you can hear, stop it. Dean Blandino did the ball across the plane as he extended. The ruling on the first thing he's probably going to look at here. Covered by the defense. The previous play is under further review. He's on a body there and not down yet. So, so the ball, I clearly don't have the ball in the end zone. But what I'm looking at is the right elbow, correct? Oh, right elbow is down. Every, everything is elbow. short, but I've got a right elbow. I just need to confirm control. I just need to confirm control. The second thing I'll have to look at, if that's what he decides, I'm is at time on the clock. It, it looked like two seconds. Two seconds is probably about right. They have a timeout. I still have control with the ball. Yes. So you'll obviously fire the timeout okay, immediately. So, so we're going to go. Don't love the play call there. Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. This is going to be an automatic timeout that we're going to try to Six seconds. As yes, sir, Dean. Reggie, we have, took we have seven seconds. ball down, down by contact at the half-yard line. So it's going to be it's, it's going to be third and goal. Okay. Right? We're going to put six, five seconds on the game clock, and we're going to charge San Antonio their timeout. Okay. Gotcha. And we can move it, move it, move it up. It's actually a little closer than the half. Make it a ball length short of the goal line. You hear that? All right. I mean, that is incredible insight as to how these things are decided. It's down by contact with the ball at the half guard line. It'll be third down goal. San Antonio is charged with their third and final timeout of the half, which will be 30 seconds in length. So you got one play left. 
go back to that same play? I think you have a big body back now, obviously, with two seconds left. It doesn't matter if you run or throw it. I do think if you throw it there on second down, we're going to put five, five seconds, seconds left. Wow, okay. Change things for you. You still have time to squeeze one off. I would try to I would try to throw a back shoulder. So they don't have the play call yet. You can hear Cone right there reminding his guys, hey, if, if we throw it, expect pressure. I'd take my chances because a run play here, you're done. You don't have a chance on fourth down. I'd throw it here. See if I can't throw a fade on the back shoulder to Basher, but it sounds like they're going to hand it off. The hand off to Patrick and he's in. San Antonio in a must win game. It's a late touchdown before he hit the half, and now they'll go for two. Great job there by Patrick cutting back off the right tackle. Everything was being blocked down from right to left. He cuts right in behind and slices it vertical for a big touchdown for the Brahmas in a gotta-have-it situation. Now, San Antonio is 0 for 7 on two-point conversions this year. Make it a one-possession game, and the XFL get as many as eight points in a single scoring play. Cone back in the end zone. Their first two point conversion of the season. Like we talked about a little earlier with Ta'amu, when you're throwing it high in the back of the end zone, you want a little air under that football so that your receiver can jump, time it up, and adjust in the air. That was really nicely done there by Jack Cohn and a great catch by T.J. Vasher bouncing back after the critical drop a little earlier in the two-minute operation. Efficient enough that there's still three seconds remaining in the half. Remember, always dangerous Puka Williams set up for the return in a league that has a super touchback that can bring it out to the 50 if you kick it out of bounds. You got to kick it off. Yeah, don't kick it out of bounds, whatever you do here. There's Puka Williams. Can't find freedom, and that's how the half will end. So San Antonio finds some momentum thanks to Jordan Williams' interception and then great work to get to the goal line. Katie George is with Heinz Ward. Well, things are in a much different place than just two minutes ago. Let's start with the defense. They get the stop and then Jordan Williams gets the interception. They felt like they settled in as compared to the start of the game. What was the difference you saw in your defensive play? Our, our, our players don't quit, you know. J-Dub came up with a huge turnover. We went down, scored a touchdown, got the two-point conversion. We're only down eight, so we got to make some adjustments at halftime, but uh, uh, we're in a ball game. Last drive was absolutely needed. What did you like about the way the offense clicked? We just executed um, down there for the two-point conversion. That's something we worked on all week. We had the perfect call, the perfect setup, and uh, we converted, so we're down eight, so we still got a half to go. Thank you. Cole? Katie, I was set up to visit with uh, Defenders Defensive Coordinator Greg Williams, and he changed his mind last minute, said he was too pissed to do the interview and thought it would be in the best interest to skip it. So we'll get him coming out. Well, we were afraid he was going to curse. Took care of that for him. I, I think he probably knew it was in his best judgment to just go ahead and walk away. 19-11. <laughs> his uh, defense allows a score with under with five seconds to go. Coming up next, we'll get you locker room access. We'll walk through the very complicated XFL playoff scenarios. Our score at the half, the D.C. Defenders, 19, San Antonio Brahmas, 11. Get your full access, walk through the playoff scenarios and more. Our halftime coverage will start after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, the X 
XFL weekend started with this performance in front of an amazing crowd in St. Louis once again. A.J. McCarron had a day. Hooking up with a key butler there, one of his six passing touchdowns. Go back to the end zone again. St. Louis had to convert an early fourth down, and then on the very next play, gave up a fake punt. They ran the Blandino again, then went for an Orlando touchdown. They came off the ropes, exploded the second half for a 53 to 28 victory. There's going to be some math involved here. If you don't have an abacus, I'm sorry, or a calculator. We're trying to push through a Tom Hart with Greg McElroy, and we're joined now by Dean Blandino. Dean. There's so many tiebreakers that are in play sure, and in okay. a short season. We get down really low on some okay. of those tiebreakers. Where do we stand right now in regard to where that St. Louis team and Seattle stand going into the final day tomorrow? It's really interesting. Obviously, St. Louis won today. Now, if Seattle wins, you look at their record, it's the same. The next tie break would be head-to-head. -head. They're 1-1. One one. After that division record, they would both be 3-3. Three and three. Then it would go to strength of victory. And amazingly, in their wins, you take both teams, their wins, look at the records of the teams they've beaten. It's the same. So now you're going to go to the fourth tie break, which is where they rank in the division, the combined rankings in points scored and points given up you take those two numbers you add them up whoever has the lower number gets the tie break so essentially you have to but it's not points differential that i think is what's confused a lot of us it's where you rank in your division relative to the amount of points scored versus given up as far as the brahmas are concerned a win here would give them tiebreaker number three over arlington assuming arlington loses tomorrow so help us understand the south dean if you could Sure. So the South would end at tiebreaker three, which would be strength of victory because D.C., their record, they've got a good record. A win today would be great and would push San Antonio ahead in their strength of victory versus Arlington if Arlington loses tomorrow. Dean, you do it all. I mean, you got it all figured out. <laughs> Tiebreakers down to the decimal and uh, keeping all these guys in line as well. So here we go. San Antonio with a half to play for its season. Fred Brown. Takes the kick off at the 10. Brown to the 25. Short of the 30-yard line. Chaz Ferguson thinks the ball came out. It's still Down. San Antonio football. Momentum's a fickle thing in football, Greg, and San Antonio inside two minutes seized the momentum in the first half. They did, and their back was against the wall. I mean... D.C. was rolling offensively, really hadn't been stopped up to that point. And then sure enough, if you're just joining us, Jordan Williams is maybe the play of the season for the Brahmas to intercept a Jordan to Amu pass and to flip the field and immediately make what could have been a 23-point deficit into only an 8-point deficit at the end of the half. Here's Jaquez Patrick. And he muscles his way to a gain of 6. San Antonio's offense, they just didn't have a ton of rhythm there in the middle parts. Finished strong and started fast, but not a ton of rhythm between the two. Still have to find an answer for the protections and the pressures that Greg Williams is going to bring. No pressure here on second and four. Deion Yelder with the grab. Jimmy Johnson is the play caller for San Antonio. You hear him say treat it like a quick, meaning get that ball out fast. Treat it like quick game. So that ball's got to come out immediately. DJ Quick, he finds Patrick. Could be a San Antonio party tonight. It's a gain of 12. He definitely got it out quick right here into the flat. It's a good catch and good turn up field by Patrick, who's a load if you're trying to tackle him at an angle. 242-pound bruiser. Safety blitz coming. Swing out to Patrick. Apartment. This is Hilleman coming out of the backfield now, and he's able to pick up nine. Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator. Cherokee. Cherokee. Fire zone. Cherokee. 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 
A lot of NFL experience for Williams. You hear fire zone. Means pressure is obviously coming. Cherokee right here looks like corner with a C. There it is. Out to Acres. Talking with Greg Williams this week. It's, just, it's fun talking ball with the guy, but he mentioned something specific. So I got 23 bogeys in play this weekend to disguise coverage. What's a bogey in that regard? Bogey is something that would be a plus one, meaning you can overload and add a guy. And basically, they're things that are unusual. So a corner blitz, overload pressure, the pressure we talked about earlier, hated a little, three up the middle. Those are your bogeys that are kind of one-offs that are difficult for an offense to prepare for. Drop eight again, and Cole fits it in to Nick Holly, his second grab, goes for seven. Really nice rhythm so far from Jack Cohn on this opening drive of the second half. And you see the pinpoint accuracy there to the left pectoral, which teaches the wide receiver to turn that direction. So that was so accurate, they turned away from what would have been a big collision. On second and three, Patrick had taken down, lost his helmet. You have to come out for a play. So we're going to penalize half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Got injury on White. It's, it's on the number three receiver. And it was on number 39, Brett? That is correct. Oh! Previous it's, spot, it's man. You got Previous it. spot. What do you want? Personal foul. Face mask. Defense, number 39. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Meanwhile, Isaiah Johnson grabbed at his hamstring in coverage. Santos Ramirez is the one who got flagged for the face mask. Hey. Hey, Trish, I need to come right over. 72. 72. 72 on Vegas. Ready. Eighth play of the drive. to Holly instead throws it over to the sideline. Let's take a look at today's progressive first half stats. As you can see, the rush yards for both teams kind of been hit or miss, but the passing attack for both teams been very much alive. A couple of huge plays for DC on great catch and runs by excellent wide receivers, Chris Blair and Lucky Jackson, and then Jack Cohn kind of picking them apart on the underneath with a couple throws downfield. Pressure again. And Cohn spiked in front of Patrick. Flag down. Six. It's the NCI. NCI, so that was a dick. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to say DOF. Gotcha. DOF. All right, San Antonio, five yards sorry, DC, six, DOF accepted. Marcus, what was that number again? Number six, six for Dahl Brown. Six. Offside. <laughs> Defense, number six. Five-yard penalty, second down. And you can see right there at the bottom of your screen, Fidal Brown. Former Ole Miss Rebel, clearly in the neutral zone as the ball was snapped, getting a head start in his pass rush. Opening drive of the half. Cone gets out of pressure. Flag down in the backfield. Joel Wallace. 
Dallas number 99 has been a load. Holy. Offense number 66. 10 yard penalty. Second down. And you'll see Laval right here working against the defensive tackle, tries to slip inside. And just pulled down, pulled down Joe Wallace. Yeah, completely. Save a life. You get beat either way. At least hang on as best you can before he gets into the backfield. Good penalty if there ever was one, I suppose. On second and 15, they try to run it with Patrick. And he gets taken down. Well, Reed, drafted by the Lions in 2014 out of Princeton. First two-time first-team All-American Princeton in two decades when he was a senior. Oh, they're going to drop the house. Not bring the house, drop the house. Third and 16, the first down line is the two. Well covered. T.J. Vasher held well short. Come on, Fuller, the stop. Obviously not the result you want if you're San Antonio, but still, first drive to the second half. You get into a nice rhythm offensively. The holding penalty inside the 10. Ultimately stymies the drive, but either way, walk away with points. You got to feel good about some of the adjustments you made at halftime. 28 yard attempt for Parker Romo. And it's good. Makes it a five point game. San Antonio has scored on consecutive possessions for the first time today. Jack going back to the drawing tablet. Williams, I saw you at halftime. You actually took the responsibility for a couple calls in that first half. What, what did you want to change about how you're calling this game? Well, the big thing is this, is that uh, what, while ago is I put one of our defensive ends out on a fire zone on that one long catch right there. He did a really good job. It was just a mismatch of a really good wide receiver on the defensive end. If I could get that call back, I'd change it. Plus, also, we got to get there when it takes that long okay, to throw the ball down the field. So our rush in the fire zone needed to get there to help that young man who did a very good job with coverage. The big thing is we just got to continue to make them earn everything. Tackle, tackle well, okay? We haven't tackled as well as we normally do, okay? And then no free plays. These guys have been really good about that all year. Thank you, Coach. You betcha. Greg Williams all ball. Here's Puka Williams, Jr. And he gets stuck at the 24-yard line. Jack Cohen with Katie George. Jack, back-to-back -back drives that result with points. How would you describe the offensive efficiency right now? Yeah, I mean, we had an efficient last drive, just able to get the ball out quick, find the open spots, and uh, just got to keep doing that. They bring a lot of pressure. What's the key to managing it? Just everyone's got to be on the same page. I think communication's huge for picking up pressure. Just receivers and O-line, knowing who's hot, knowing who's not. So that's the biggest thing. Thank you. Thank you. Cone's coming off of his best game of the street season, 300 yards passing last week. Tamo gets it out. Still on his feet to pick up a first down is Alex Ellis. Texas left. 23 duo. Zeke Lance. 23. 23 duo. Texas. Zeke Lance. Texas, Cole, you got some duo. Tell us about it. Uh, duo just basically going to focus on those double teams inside run, but you heard that glance, which is going to give you the RPO option as well. Yeah, you can throw the slot receiver on a slant if you like it. There it is. And it goes for the first down. That seems like a very simple combination of plays. It's so simple. And your eyes as a quarterback, Alaska, Alaska. as soon as left, you put the ball in the belly of the back, you're looking at that weak side linebacker. If the weak side linebacker steps up at all, you can throw it right in behind him. And that's exactly what they did here. Beasley was offside for San Antonio. Free play for Ta'amu. Did Jordan Tamu run a lot of similar plays at Ole Miss? Very similar. Offside. Defense number 33. Five-yard penalty. First down. Ole Miss, of course, and Hugh Freeze. Of course, right here, see the offside by Beasley. Led to 
a free play for D.C. But Ole Miss and Hugh Freeze, most of their offense was predicated off of RPO, where there are three different options on every single play. Hand off to the running back, quarterback run, or throw it. He's excellent at feeling those zones. Huge gap for Abram Smith to run through. Picks up 11. Just a massive hole right here between the center, Ty Cleary, and the right guard, Liam Fornadel. Just a massive right. void there that Abe Smith's going to hit every time. Tamu on the run. Through the hands. Trying to get it to Puka Williams Jr. It's a good effort there by Puka Williams. Of course, running back in that situation. I know he's listed as a running back slash wide receiver, but definitely has spent more time in the backfield than he has in the slot. Would have been a tough one for him to reel in. They released Reckwell Armstead late this week. They added Cameron Harris at the running back position. Tom on the run again through the hands of Chris Blair. That leaves third and ten. Every XFL game this weekend, the final week of the regular season with playoff implications. to Josh Hammond. Hammond can scoot a little bit for good reason. His entire family loves old school roller skating. The four wheels, not the inline. Oh yeah. Not the not the roller blades. Not the roller blades. This is like I'm talking like disco era. That's right. Maybe do some limbo. There you go. You've been known to boogie in the roller rink a couple times, haven't There's you? No doubt. A skater in my fifth grade class, 49 yard attempt for Matt McCray. Got the leg and he's got the accuracy. And DC it takes an eight point lead. 4.43 remaining in the third quarter. It's a must win game for San Antonio against the best team in the XFL. And DC with the lead. ESPN's presentation of the XFL on ABC. A return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Marie is ready to buy her first home. But it His elbow is down! His elbow is down! Holy Jack. Dang, bro. Hey, you should go on that screen and go out and pick it off. Dude, I know, dude. Dang. That was a crackback block over there on the kickoff return. That's a crackback. I'm the king of crackback, so I know when I see crackback, no one called it over there. Hey, we good, baby. We good, baby. We good. 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 Boom! Good! This is a high-stress situation. Second half of a must-win game for Heinz Ward. King of the crackback, self-proclaimed. <laughs> He's definitely up. I mean, if I'm thinking like all-time great crackback blocks, he probably owns three or four of them. I mean, who would even be close second? I, 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 he I is like nobody. he's like the king of crackback blocks. Honestly, Cole, like I, I don't know if I can think of any. No, not like he did it. No, especially the amount of times. Final week of the regular season, San Antonio needs to win today and an Arlington loss tomorrow to extend its season. Here's Fred Brown. Fred Brown popped at the 25. Sometimes I think with Heinz Ward, when we watched him play growing up, Cole and you are a diehard Steelers fan, so you get all starstruck every time we do a San Antonio game. But... I think he was just born in the wrong body. Like he's a defensive lineman. Oh, you know, he, like, that's really what yeah. he's a he's a killer. Like he was a defensive lineman that wants to just rip your heart out. He just was born to be a little bit smaller, so he had to revert to quarterback slash wide receiver, and it played it beautifully. 
is Hilleman. Would you agree with that, Cole? Absolutely. Well, it was interesting before the game, he told us why they picked up Nick Holly at wide receiver. Played running back, quarterback, wide receiver, return kicks at Kent State and said, he's a football player. Guys, just a football player. And you think about how specialized we've become in almost all sports these days, positions, certain things that you do at a certain position. That's what Hines was to me, man. I, I played against him when I was at Auburn. He was at Georgia. The dude was just a football player at the end of the day. He's a lot younger than you. I don't know what, what you mean. He's way younger than you. <laughs> Actually older. <laughs> Second and seven. Dick Cohn has showed some real poise in this game. He hooks up with Landon Akers. Hooks up a first down in a game of 17. So what, Akers is starting to have a day now. I mean, those little quick underneath throws. He knows exactly where he needs to be. And, and Cohn has clearly developed a rapport with him on some of the underneath option routes. They're going to continue to hit that over and over again if Greg Williams continues to bring the heat. Season high, 88 yards for Akers. Cone looking for Alizé Mack, this tight end. And the former Domers hook up here, and Mack with a stiff arm picks up a first down. Let's go, Floss left. 269. Stick Geronimo fires on Geronimo. You're going to have to stick right here. That's where you should go against the fire zone. Indeed, Mac. Inside the sideline to pick up another first down. Why, was it, why is that where you want to go? Because if you throw a slant, especially with guys dropping out underneath it, fire zone means guys are dropping out underneath it. Now you can throw into the pressure if you want, but if you have pressure occasionally working the outbreakers where you can immediately jump leverage there's not going to be any trash out there is where you want to go with the football you can get surprised by throwing an in breaker against the drop end here's acres again and he gets flipped down there is a flag on the play Dula kelly he's fast 24. the word the run in we have. The what 30, you so we're going to go 15 yards and a 15 on our first. Number, one more time. 24. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 24. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. As you can see, Kelly on the outside, grabbed the face mask right there, continues to hold on to it. Makes a nice play, but unfortunately that hand got up a little too high. And he gets penalized yet again. 73, 73. Six seconds on the clock. Better hustle. Omaha, Omaha. And they'll use the timeout. Well, they can't get lined up right. week of the regular season and we finish up with a doubleheader tomorrow Arlington can win against Houston and get a rematch with Houston in a South Division playoff next week they need to win just to make the postseason meanwhile Seattle battling with St. Louis for postseason berth they're home against the Vipers at 7 o'clock on ESPN 2 as always every game streams on ESPN plus Seattle DC would make for a really interesting game next week in the playoffs. That would be <laughs> a barn burner. Take the over believe. already? I think the over will be at 78. <laughs> and I might Stop fire it. the over. That's Stop it. A lot of points will be scored if those are the two teams that match up for the North Division Championship. Going to plant their flag in enemy territory. It's Hilleman, the running back. There he goes. Cone steps up, stumbles, gains three. Hey. 
second and seven. Baker's back in the game. 369, 369. He's their leading receiver, eight catches for 90 yards. As you can see, the official standing right there at the front 75, pylon. 75, Doesn't see that hand on the back 75. of Vasher. That was well defended. Talking to 88, Alizé Mack. Saying if they all blitz, I'm coming to you. Instead, they drop eight. Cole goes the other way. That's Hickers, and he squeezes forward. I mean, it's Nick Holly, and he's just short of the goal line. First to go coming for San Antonio. Trailing by eight. Remember, eight points makes it a one-score game. And that looked like Heinz Ward right there. I mean, just getting low, getting skinny, getting vertical immediately and stretching as far as you possibly can. Pick up the first down, but just short of the end zone. Dome's about to get rowdy if they can punch it in. Hilleman in. Touchdown, San Antonio. party of the year outside turning it into a big party inside great surge play side and continuing to drive Hilleman has really run angry all day today refusing to be denied You get, if you get man coverage, watch the motion. If the if the defender runs with the motion guy, now you hit your slant right here. Oh, looking for him. Drew it late. Intercepted. Or at least broken up by Fuller. What threw off the timing of that from the QB perspective? They played inside leverage. So when you have a slant, it's very, very difficult to win inside. You look at the defender and where he's lined up. You get exactly what you want defensively. You're getting man coverage. But usually in man coverage, unless it's all out pressure, look at the defender. Look how far inside Batcher even turns his hips and won't allow him to cross face. That was really well defended there by Trayvon Fuller as they brought the pressure, all-out pressure, inside leverage, and they just can't win across his face. In a perfect world, you'd have a fade there, you'd have an out route there, but couldn't you get the hand in, signal. In for, with the slant, the fade, in, in a perfect somebody world, else? For instance, Peyton Manning sees that, he's giving him a quick signal to the out route, meaning he's gonna run to the front pylon. The guy's two yards inside, he can't cover an out route, so give a quick hand signal, and next thing you know, Basher would run a five-yard out and walk into the end zone to be a laugher. It's interesting that you compared it, though, to Peyton Manning, one of the greatest ever. How common is that at the next level to be able to identify it and change it in that scenario? You have to have the freedom to do so from your offensive coordinator, first and foremost. Secondly, you've got to be on the same page with your wide receivers. And obviously, game 10 in a new league, maybe they haven't quite developed that chemistry to be able to work in tandem and work in unison like that just yet. But Jack Cohen's got San Antonio to must win within two. Try to take down the top team in the league and get to the postseason. ESPN's presentation of the XFL on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. I think the guys are just, they keep working. They're starting to get some energy, getting guys fired up, crowds fired up, so we just got to keep working, keep playing, and we'll have good results. What's it been like going against that pressure? Uh, they're definitely throwing a lot of things at us, but we can handle it. We just got to stick to our rules, and we got it. Thank you. Thank you. Like Katie, thanks. Jordan Ta'amu, part of this two QB system for D.C. So we start the fourth quarter. And the defenders. Holding on to a 
two-point lead. Derek King is the second quarterback they use. We'll hear from him in just one moment. Got to run it. Thomas pulls it back. It's batted away. Derek King with Cole Kublik to walk us through this D.C. possession. Derek, you just want to kind of get, get a feel for this offense through your eyes, what you're seeing. I know you're going to get the call here in your hat, so just kind of take us through what you see right now. Right now we got Trevor Bryant, Alaska. It's going to be a freeze play. Coach Kites want to see what, they kind of, what kind of coverage they're going to, and he'll call it right after this. We got Linda. So we got outside zone, left stick, comes up to the, to the right. We got a stick. We got a bubble by number two. Throw it. Throw the bubble. Yep. Ah. You say throw it. The quarterback always wants to throw the RPO. It's an RP throw, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, if, we, if we can throw, we definitely want to throw it. Most quarterbacks. All right, so big third down coming up. Just walk us through what you got and what you're seeing from the defense. We got spread left, sack, red, 300. So we're going to send that inside receiver in motion. Uh, we got an under cuss up. We got an outside throw by X, under route dig, and a big post. Left to right, so the curl, not there. Got pressure, got the flush. Tamu smashed, but he picked up the first down call. Yeah, first down yardage. Yeah. All right, so one of the reasons, yeah, one of the reasons, go you, got, you got to go, you go. You, don't let me hold you up. All right, one of the reasons I wanted to get your thoughts on this, I, I had a talk with your college offensive coordinator, Rhett Lashley. You had the torn ACL, you couldn't participate in the spring game. He said he actually gave you the headset, yeah. and you called series on your first two drives. What happened? Two touchdowns, man. You know, I'm a quarterback. So I want to throw the ball downfield. The guys make good plays, and, you know, we scored twice. Is that in your future, coaching? That's my plan. So I definitely want to be a coach one day. Um, you know, maybe sooner than later. Who knows? We'll get one more for you here on this second down. What you're seeing, what's going through the mind of the backup quarterback? So we got second and seven. We got Texas right, 22 duo Z glance. So it's going to be the old line making duo blocks with inside zone. And number three receiver has a glance. Uh, we're going to read that mic back. If the mic back flies up, we're going to throw the glance right behind his head. If he sits back, we hand it off. Should be a hand. He handed it off. The running back made a great play. First down. That's how it should work every time. I mean, how much fun is it hitting the ball to that guy? It's pretty fun, man. He's a great player. He makes top job easier. No, he's a no, really good back. You got to have somebody like him to make you not throw the ball as a quarterback. He said it again. I'm sorry. You got to have a running back like him to make you not throw the ball in an RPO. Yeah. You know, sometimes we don't, the RPO's not open. We, we love to hit the ball with AB. You know, he's a great back. He always makes plays for us. What do you see in here? Uh, we threw about one formation. I didn't get the play call. I was talking, but it's flex. Let me see. Uh, a little, little inside zone. The end squeezed, but they they um they blitz they, they squeeze pill at the back, so they had somebody out there for Jordan. He made a good play. Derek, we appreciate the time, man. Thank you. Thank you. Now you can see, as he mentioned to Cole, that when his playing days are done, coaching would be in his future. Second down eleven for Jordan Tamu. been leaning on Abram Smith, the leading rusher in the league. Tamu delivers, and it's taken away! Luke Barco put it right off his shoulder pads! Barco didn't lost the football again! Teddy Adeluse covers it up. Another huge play for the San Antonio defense. Carnage on the field in the Alamo Dome. Injured on the return. He's not the only Brahma down. Sean Williams is also injured. Times in this game, one at the end of the half and one here at the beginning of the fourth quarter, where San Antonio has seized momentum. They cashed in in the first half. Can they do it here to take the lead? Uh, Luke Barku interception. Jack Cohn in the offense, big opportunity. What's been working well for him today? Quick passing game. They've done a really good job here in the second half getting the ball out of Jack Cohn's hands quickly. That stick dragon again. This time you got man coverage. You might be able to work the slant up top. Cohn picks up the first down. That's T.J. Vasher in a game of 13. Vasher's been a different guy, too. Had the drop, critical drop earlier in the game, but, man, he's come alive here in the second half. Him, along with Akers, 
And with Nick Hawley, they've really found something in the passing game. Where's the mic? Ron, Vegas, Vegas. We go. My son. Another quick release. This is Deion Yelder. Jimmy Johnson's calling the whale of the game. Double left close, stay nickel. Double left close, 77, stick cut. Double left close, 77, 77 stick 77, cut. 77, I'm back, it's ready. You good? You know what you got? Tone in the run. second half is nearly How perfect. What are you, Luke? Who's the mic? Linda, Vegas, Vegas. We go. He's 13 Lady. of 14 for 123 yards. Maybe 14 of 15. Back to back to Yelder. They've run that concept over and over and over again. It's just a standard stick. You got one guy out in the flat, one guy that's going to run five yards and stop right on the point. And every time they get in zone coverage, you just pound that stick. And they have yet to find an answer for it defensively. it to the edge and Travis Toybin with his first catch of the game. Barku out of the 10. Katie, what do you got? Well, Luke's heading to the locker room after taking that big hit on the interception fumble that ensued. He said he thought that he passed the concussion protocol test, but as you guys know, these guys are competitors. The athletic training staff has stepped in and said, hey, we got to protect you from yourself. Head to the locker room. It's a big piece missing from the secondary for San Antonio. A second and five. Two guys in the same spot. It's Vasher with the catch and the first down. 18-yard pickup for number 18, T.J. Vasher. This was really nicely done. Good timing. Three-step, two hitches right on Vasher, the big body who's got some separation on the curl. He gets upfield. And the Brahmas are knocking on the door as Jack Cohn continues to stand in there under immense pressure from Greg Williams in this D.C. defense. They're getting fired up. They're throwing them back. They need a win to keep going. Remember, San Antonio will host the XFL championship. Incomplete, a hair behind Patrick. They need a win and an Arlington loss. but they didn't cover on the outside. They did not cover T.J. Vasher, who was wide open. Instead, he gets it out immediately, which is fine. They bust the coverage. You can't anticipate that. You certainly can't do it in less than two seconds. Well, that blitz, blitz is breathing fire. We're down. Field goal wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Third down. Cone back to the end zone. Incomplete. Trying to find Vasher. Kelly with the coverage. Hines Ward can challenge if he wants. I think you got to challenge this. You got water bottles on the feet. I mean, it looks like the defender had completely wrapped up TJ Basher there initially, but his eyes were looking back the whole time. Ward's using a timeout to think about it. He wants to challenge the clock's running. Long challenge it. Let him challenge it. Timeout. He's good. This is the shot right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. So is he calling a timeout to challenge? Yeah, I think you got to challenge that. I've got the look. Are you calling a timeout to challenge? He's challenging? Okay. All right. I got it. Was no defensive pass interference. The 
Boys. Okay, Reggie, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'll let you know. I'm going to look at it. Of course, he can challenge anything in the XFL. Both hands. Even though the defender's looking for the ball, he's got his wrapped up right there with the ball. Uh, 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 uh. And there's a restriction before the ball arrives. I'm going to go to Skycam next. All right, Dean's taking a look at it. Skycam is not, is not as good as my original shot. No one's on. Here, hand is my best look. I do have a foul. I've got him wrapped up, both hands clearly wrapped up, material restriction. Okay. Reggie, Reggie, after review, you do have a foul for defensive pass interference. Number 24 on DC. So we're going to be first and goal at the one yard line. San Antonio keeps their time out, but they're done the for challenge. They won the challenge. After further review, it's been determined there was pass interference. Defense number 24. The foul occurred in the end zone and by year, the ball will be placed at the one yard line. First and goal. San Antonio has won the challenge and will not be charged with the timeout. Sound and fury signifying defensive pass interference. So Porter, Hines Ward, emotional on the San Antonio sideline. Now first and goal. Oh. Patrick in a running back. Patrick swallowed up before he can get to the line of scrimmage. Second and goal. zone. Vasher still one that he should have reeled in. DC's going to run back the same play call. See if San Antonio repeats the same play call. They can run to the right here. Patrick bottled up. First through. He is in. Touchdown San Antonio. Brahma's first lead of the game. decision here for San Antonio. Do you go for two to make it a six-point game, which would basically put the game on the line in a touchdown and an extra point situation, or do you go for three to make it make them make a decision, but they opt to go for two here, make it a six-point ball game. They hadn't converted a two-point conversion all season until this game. Jack Cohen going to Hilleman. A 
pivotal plays made by the San Antonio defense throughout this game. Luke Barco took the ball away from D.C. And that set up this touchdown drive. Zaccas Patrick ran it in through traffic. And then John Hilleman took the pass from Jack Cohn for the conversion. Hinesworth leading by six in a must-win game. Zone. Yeah, it felt great. Just get that, get, that, get that touchdown from my team, man. We needed this. We, we know we need this game. We're putting all on the line, and we got to get this win, man. Just doing whatever it takes to get the team win. You guys were down by 16 at one point. What's led to this turnaround? We got nothing to lose. We just come out here and fight, and we were resilient. We, we was down in a situation last week, and we knew we could make a comeback. We knew we, we, knew we had we got the potential to be where we could be. This is, we're supposed to be the best team in the league, and we're right there. We just got to keep we gotta finish it out right here. Thank you. Bye. Luca Williams grabbed it on a hop. Somehow that ball stayed in bounds. We do have a flag, though, on the far sideline. Yeah, that was very close. On one way over here, it looked like it bounced beyond the 20. It did. It did. It did. And that's cleaned up. Got it. We got, we got leaving our own. Okay, so a foul for team B moving early. I think I think I think my eyes off and check the ball down. Both teams, both teams moved early. Both teams moved early. Okay. Can't move until the ball is touched by the return man. Spot. All right. I've seen a, a ball take multiple hops like that in the league this year. Both teams during the kickoff are moving early. Illegal formation by the receiving team. Illegal formation by the kicking team. The foul's offset. It's first and ten at the dead ball spot. And so, Greg, now the best. Offense in the league, the best running team, the D.C. defenders have 5-11 to make up a six-point deficit. Doesn't seem out of their reach. No, and they've been cooking offensively for the most part. It's been self-inflicted mistakes. A couple of interceptions, one great play by Luke Barku a second ago. But now Luke Barku, you can make a case, one of the better defenders in the league in the back end. He's out. So you would anticipate them challenging the backup corner that's in for the Brahmas right now. That's Kima Severan. They swing it out. Abram Smith, he gets turned inside, no gain, and now the crowd here in the Alamo Dome getting into this game and helping feed the Brahma's energy. They clinch a playoff spot with a win today and an Arlington loss tomorrow. It's must win for San Antonio. Lose and the offseason starts tomorrow. Tomlin pulls it back, delivers for a first down. Brandon Smith with a 21-yard gain. And just a thing of beauty. He's looking at that weak side linebacker. As soon as that weak side linebacker collapses, that's Teddy Ed Lucy. Throws it right in behind him on the glance route for a nice big completion. All sorts of movement. Flags and towels on the ground. With content, right? Yeah, with content. Yep, encroachment 90, encroachment 90. Matthew Gotell. Five-yard penalty, first down. A couple of games with playoff implications tomorrow to wrap up the regular season. If San Antonio wins here, Bob Stoops' Arlington team needs a win tomorrow against Houston to play for the South Division Championship. Meanwhile, it's a tiebreaker battle between Seattle and St. Louis. Sea Dragons have the Vipers tomorrow on ESPN2 tomorrow night. Every game streams on ESPN+. Plus. D.C. and Houston already have their playoff spots reserved. And for the penalty, first and five. Tamu has won. First down run for the defenders. Great fake turns into a 13-yard game. And a really nice job reading Drew Beasley. And then the line scrimmage, he crashes down, taking away the run play. And then Tamu just has to make one guy miss, and he's off to the races because of man coverage on the perimeter. Just a great read there by the quarterback. Three and a half and rolling. Sideline. Jump ball one and a first down by Jazz Ferguson. Six foot five 
Jazz Ferguson with a 27-yard catch. And challenging the backup corner in Kima Sivaran. As you can see, Jazz Ferguson using that length, timing it nicely, taking it right off the top of Sivaran's helmet and creating another big play down the field. a timeout here, something he didn't like. Play clock was getting awfully late. Man, oh man, Greg McRoy, there was some concern, and we talked to the D.C. coaches about this, just natural human tendency. D.C. with nothing to play for today. Then maybe they took the foot off the gas a little bit, lay off the throttle going into the playoffs. Coaching staff insisted, we, we want to win, we want to play well, we want to hit the playoffs on a high note. They're giving all the effort today. Yeah, they are. It came out of the gates just absolutely on fire. Felt like at that point they kind of exhaled, kind of breathed a sigh of relief, which allowed San Antonio to create a couple mistakes, which allowed them to climb back into the game and ultimately take the lead. But here, as you can see, D.C. will probably tell themselves this when they get back tomorrow and watch the tape. They've been their own worst enemy with some of their own self-inflicted mistakes. So here with an opportunity to steal one, even though they haven't played their best football today. League's leading rusher is next to Jordan Tomo. That's Abram Smith. Going to run a quarterback keep, and he takes it in. Tomo with a four-yard touchdown run. You see him at the point of attack going and cutting the end man on the line of scrimmage, Downey. That allows to Amu to make a decision. Instead of trying to get to the perimeter, he cuts it up inside where there's plenty of space. And he calls his own number for the touchdown. What's interesting here, though, I, I don't know why DC is going for two. In order to take the lead, all you got to do is go for one. So if you're liking their odds a little bit better from the five-yard line. They've only gone for one once this season. Meanwhile, they they nailed that one, so they're batting a thousand on one-point conversions. They're only hitting on 50 percent of the two-point conversions. And knowing that they sliced right through San Antonio's defense a second ago, running the football, I'm just surprised because a two-point lead gives you nothing. I mean, it's still a field goal wins it for the Brahmas. So there you go. Just an assumption, but freeze. You go to the line of scrimmage, you freeze. Alaska means no play whatsoever. You take a picture, and then it sounds like they're going to go with the exact same play they just scored on, 18, which is a quarterback sweep. So we'll see whether or not they call 18 or 19 based on the look they get when they go with the Alaska. So quarterback sweep to the left. Tomo. Battle sees in. The ball came out, but it looked like he'd already crossed the goal line. Ellis ended up with it anyway. Same play. Consecutive runs for Jordan Tomo. And D.C. back in front by one. Another unbelievably good block from Abe Smith. This time he flattens the defender right in the hole. Look at him meet up right there. Puts that defender on his back, and the next thing you know, Tahamu's right behind him. Just wills his way We're looking at it. across the line of scrimmage for the conversion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, uh, the ball, the ball comes in. Yeah, the ball, in, in the, the event. The, Low end zone, that's that's a recover, which is almost the same shot. Here's the recovery. ball coming yeah. loose, but so he's already in the end. 
See, see where he is when the ball comes loose? See where his body is? Correct. He's, he's, he's over. Reggie, we are clear. The ball came loose, but after it had broken the plane of the goal. There you go. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, and, Dean. And that's key Make because sure in this situation, coach. similar to fourth down, only the guy who fumbled could recover. It. After further so even though the ruling on the field is confirmed. Even though DC did recover it, that's a moot point. So Jordan Tamu, consecutive runs across the goal line. Once again, the simplicity of this DC offense is really what makes it tick. Very impressive, and you could see just how quickly they got down the field. If there was ever going to be a criticism of that drive, is that they score too quick. That would be the one complaint, but of course, you, like find up. you find yourself with a lead. Two minutes and 30 seconds left, you'll take it any day of the week, but does leave a lot of time for the Brahmas. It's like the Fiesta being too much fun. You might pay for it the next day. Here's Fred Brown. Fred Brown with a huge hole. Taken down by the kicker at the 48. It's a 40-yard return, and the Brahmas will have a short field to work with with 2.26 left. Defenders quarterback Jordan Tiamo, you leave that score and Josh, start with this, the confidence in Jazz Ferguson to throw that fade that led up for the score. Yeah, he's a big guy. Uh, we worked it all week in practice and, you know, gave him a chance. He came down and made a play with it. Back-to-back -back Q runs. Was that the play that you wanted? Yeah, that's the play. You know, we, we practiced all week. They were going to give us a box. We had blockers and just had to go in there and score. And, you know, offensive line did a great job. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you. Pride of Oxford, Mississippi. Party of Funkies if they can pull it off. Here's C.J. Vasher. First out of bounds by Kelly, who's been at the center of just about every big play here in the fourth quarter. Good end back. Might just want to take this one to the two-minute warning. You're only 10 yards away from being in John Parker Romo's field goal range. He's got a big leg and his hit from deep earlier this year on multiple occasions. So you're already in a really good spot offensively because of the Fred Brown kick return. Romo trying to stay loose as we hit the two-minute warning. San Antonio looking to come from behind again in a second of three when we return to the Alamo Dome. Zero. No more my bads, no more my mistakes. No, we got to be flawless, man. We got one more half. Give me all you got. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Three. Come on. It's time for us to win a game now, all right? It's time for us to win a game. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Heinz Ward has won everything from Dancing with the Stars to the Super Bowl, but now his Brahmas Vegas. need to come from behind for a second time We're to going. win this and keep Fire. their XFL Fire. season alive. <laughs> and they'll lean on the running game of Jacquez Patrick, and he picks up a first down. No timeouts remaining for the Brahmas. Can continue to run the football. Already referenced that John Parker Romo is comfortable from this range. He can hit from here. The big thing is you know that Greg Williams is going to start to bring the house. He's got to knock you out of field goal range. So your thought process as a quarterback is I have to get the ball out immediately. Because right now, even if we take a knee or spike it three straight times, we can still kick a game-winning field goal. Cannot lose yardage here at any point in the next few plays. Romo's long is 57. Call dangerous. 125 remaining. Jimmy Johnson is the offensive coordinator. Go, go! Let's go. Trips left. Let's go. Trips left. All right, let's go. 75. Let's go. Trips left beta. 75 thunder. Trips left beta. 75 thunder. You see that showing pressure here. Cone delivers to Patrick. Greg Williams, defensive coordinator for DC, trying to strip it. Stacks 
Zing, 65 scan, smash after you've gone It's ready. Better hustle, only up, eight on the play up. clock. Here we go, here we go. Time out, time out, time out. Mm, good choice. It's too important of a play to rush it and be discombobulated. That's a well-used timeout by Jack Cohn there. So 44 seconds left. Run the ball. It's fine. If that one vacates, I'm in the juke. But zero juke should be fine. But I just don't want to take a sack. That's the only thing that concerns me. And I understand that on the juke play, too. That's going to take a half second to develop. I, I don't like juke That's knowing that, that Greg Williams me. might bring the house. I understand his concerns. Because juke is a route that forces you to set up the defender and quite literally try to juke him out at the top of the stem. That takes a half second, and if they're blitzing the house, you're not going to be able to get that thing out in time. Scan on Vegas, right? What? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. You're going to have to slap. You're going to have to drag. You're going to be in drag. You're going to be in protection now. Let's go, Vegas, Vegas. Talking to Patrick. Talking to the back, saying, you, you worry about your protection. Don't worry about your route. I said. Here they come. Cone on third and five. Unloads. Deep ball, and he overthrow T.J. Vasher. Fourth down, 37 seconds remaining, and John Parker Romo, who's proven to be the best kicker in the league, on for the lead. And Cone, worried about that pressure, comes off at the play side just a little bit too quickly, tries to find an outlet and overshoots the six foot six basher. Just an unfortunate play there, anticipating pressure and that pressure not really coming. Well, the best legs in the league and DC will use the timeout. That gives him a practice kick, which by the way was good. It would have been good by another 10 yards. Last time out for the defenders. Final week of the regular season and the final day coming your way tomorrow starting on ESPN at 3 o'clock. If San Antonio wins this, Arlington needs the answer to get into the postseason. Houston's already clinched the South and home field advantage. Then at 7 o'clock to close the regular season, Vegas in Seattle to take on the Sea Dragons. Every game streaming on ESPN Plus. Every game in the final weekend with playoff implications. What a year it's been in the XFL, and we're far from done. Romo's got a huge leg. He hit from 62 in warm-ups today. Inside of the Alamo Dome, this is from 53. And the lead. Wing the holder. of the season for Romo. Good snap, good hold. Ball starts online and then just stays a little bit wide to the right. You think it's going to draw right inside that right upright. It just doesn't go. Romo's bailed them out so many times this year. They wouldn't be in this position without him. Just an unfortunate miss there from one of the most reliable kickers in the XFL. What a battle between D.C. and San Antonio. Romo being comforted by his teammates. That kick could have pushed him to the postseason. And so now the South Division is set. Arlington is in. They'll take on Houston next Saturday. D.C. will be at home next week. Go win it, they say. Opponent still to be determined. Reggie Barlow is the D.C. head coach. He's with Cole Kubelik. Coach Barlow, your team had the playoffs already wrapped up. You had home field already.
already wrapped up. What does it say about your group, the fight and the grit that they showed to finish this game out today? Yeah, we talk about to do it in public, you got to do it in private. And under stress and pressure, the most rehearsed action will arise. We've put these guys through that throughout the week. Greg has, Coach Kais has. They stayed in the fight, and uh, we were ready to pull the win out. You needed a massive drive late from quarterback Jordan Tadamo in your offense. Just take us through your perspective. What did you see when they are able to go down and punch it in towards the end of the fourth quarter? Surely we're going to lose Tamu to the NFL, right? I'm, I'm almost <laughs> positive we will. But what a guy. What a player. What an awesome guy. Made plays with his legs. Made plays with his arm. Our offensive line did a wonderful job for those guys. And uh, I'm really proud of these guys. They stayed in it. Whereas opportunity nowhere turned to opportunity is now here. Proud of them. Coach, best news for you. If that happens, you got De'Aaron King. Blessed is what it's called. Blessed, right? But uh, we want what's best for these guys. Really proud of both of them. They play the game the right way. And the reason why this worked for us is they care about each other. And they care about each other's success. So uh, uh, we'll take it. Proud of these guys for the win. And uh, time to move on. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. 29-28 is the final. You, you heard him talking about Jordan Tamu. Jordan's with Katie now. He's getting his hugs. Jordan, heck of a victory. What impressed you most about your team's performance? Uh, you know, the, the never quitting in them and, uh, you know, continuing trusting our offense and trusting each other. Um, you know, we had a roller coaster up and down this year, but uh, glad we came out with this this victory. You guys got to let uh, off the gas a little bit because you didn't have much to play for today right. because right. you'd already locked up what you got going in the playoffs. Uh -huh. What do you think that it says about the resilience of this team, just the back and forth nature of this game? I mean, it was amazing. I mean, both teams fought hard. Uh, you know, the Brahma San Antonio is a good team, good defense. And and they fought all the way to the end. We knew it wasn't going to be easy, but we wanted to go in this, focus on the details, and win this game to help us uh, next week in the playoffs. You head home to D.C. for the semifinals of the playoffs. Why is this team capable of winning an XFL championship? You know, uh, you know the fight in us. You know, all of us, uh, we're all great players. All of us deserve a chance in the NFL. All of us deserve a chance uh, just to play and uh, be on TV and, you know, play in front of our family. So, you know, everyone's done a, done a great job, and I'm just so excited, super happy for our team. I think we're going to win this whole Thing. Coach Barla just said, surely we lose Jordan to the NFL. What do you have to say about that? I'm going to say I'm going to trust the process. I'm going to trust God and uh, trust in myself. Best of luck next week. Thank you so much. So Jordan Ta'amu and the D.C. defenders knew they had home field advantage wrapped up, but still he took some hits in this game. They really battled in this game. It all came down to a kick, and a kick that could have put San Antonio possibly into the postseason. This is John Parker Romo, who had only missed once all season. And after he missed this one, he felt like he had let his team down. His quarterback, Jack Cohn, always the leader, had other thoughts indeed. That's on me, baby. That's on me. I got you, baby. Appreciate you. I got you. It's on me. And that's leadership from Cohn. Great leadership from Ta'amu. And we're set almost for the postseason now. Just one spot left. Trying to figure out who gets in between Seattle and St. Louis. Cole Kublik down on the field. Here with defenders, I'm Edgar Francis Bernard. Take us through just late. You guys had to come up with a couple of big stops. And I know you gave up some plays you didn't want to. But what was the mindset? What was the conversation like on the sideline in the huddle to be able to close the game out? Man, it was just next play mentality, you know. Um, it's pro football, so they're going to make plays. We're going to give up plays. That's just part of it. And so, you know, our coaches kept saying, hey, next one, next one, next one. You know, move on to the next. we got to have that emotional toughness. And I thought we did a good job today. And But, you know, we got to clean some things up. But at the end of the day, we won. So it was good. How do you turn the page now and prepare for the playoffs? Man, just, uh, you know, we got to be grateful for the things we did in the regular season. But uh, we got to see who wins, you know. And after, I don't know who won. But we're excited to go play in the playoffs. And uh, it's going to be a big game. Thank you very much. Congrats. Yep, thank you. Well, D.C. has been the best team in the league all season. They have proved that once again today, but they've been playing some close games late where the point differential last four is only three points now. D.C. 9-1 and one wins the North. They'll be home. The South is set now. Arlington plays Houston tomorrow to close the regular season. Nothing to lose for either team. They'll match up again a week Saturday, a week from today. 
to determine the South Division Championship. That's Saturday, 7 o'clock Eastern in Houston. The North Division Championship will be at Sunday, 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN at Audi Field. And D.C. still waiting to see who their opponent will be for that one. You can get tickets for the championship. Go to XFL.com slash tickets with prices starting at just $25. Championship game right back here May 13th in San Antonio. What a win for D.C. in a back and forth affair. Maybe the best game of the season in the XFL after we saw the highest scoring game in XFL history before us in St. Louis. And Greg, what really impresses me about D.C.'s effort today they, they could have just laid down. Yeah. They, they had everything already in the bank with home field advantage for next week, but they really fought hard. But the message from Reggie Barlow, the entire staff, was we, we want some momentum going into the postseason, and they created it. Look, if you look at the performance, they were the better team today. Now, San Antonio battled, man. Yep. They played their hearts out, and they made plays. But the reason why they were able to make some plays is because D.C. really kind of allowed them to get back in the game. A couple of big interceptions by the Brahma's defense kind of changed the momentum and allowed them to surge forward. But D.C., when they're playing their best football, nobody's touching them, that's for sure. Let's talk postseason for just one moment. D.C. will either get Seattle or St. Louis. Who matches up better with the defenders? You're going to have to play extremely well in the front seven defensively. And one thing that I've seen from both those two teams, they've been a little bit hit or miss on defense. Now, you want quarterback fireworks? You got unbelievable fireworks, Deji McCarron in St. Louis. You got terrific potential playmaking with Ben DiNucci out of Seattle. So I think if I had to pick one, it'd probably be St. Louis, just because they're not as mistake prone as Seattle has been as times this year but either team I think has the firepower to do it but it certainly won't be easy point differential just about the same between the two opponents and DC swept them both didn't lose the game in division what a weekend in the XFL mahalo to George Taamu he and the defenders will play on They'll be at home next week at Audi Field. Cannot wait for that scene and our first trip to our nation's capital as D.C. will try to punch its ticket to return to San Antonio in the XFL Championship. So for Katie George, Kokilik, Greg McElroy, our fantastic crew here in San Antonio, what a thriller. D.C. and San Antonio crush the over. They finish 29-28 tomorrow. First game of the day is on ESPN. Houston and Arlington in the first of two consecutive matchups between those two. D.C. comes behind at once, but twice the defenders pull off a 29-28 victory. Thanks to a missed kick at the end. Coming up next is ABC World News tonight on your or your local news over most of these ABC stations. Have a great exit.